Okay, so today we have the beautiful Tara. Tara, where are you based? I am in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Lovely. You're my first guest from Canada. Thank you for, for taking the time to come onto the show. So uh, Tara, you are a clarity coach and a certified energy practitioner. Yes, I am. So essentially what that means is I combine energy work and intuition development, for example, or in my case, the Akashic Records to help people gain clarity and more so gain clarity in themselves and their next yeah. step. I love it. I love it. For the person that may not know what Akashic Records is, what, what is that? Yeah, that's a great question. So I like to call the Akashic Records the Google of the spiritual world. So wow. it's a realm, it's a space, yeah. it's kind of where infinite possibilities live. Um, it's also described as the book of life. Okay. So it's living breathing library where every single one of your past lives exists opportunities lessons you name it lives and breathes within this ever-growing library so accessing your akashic records is like accessing google for example you can gain all kinds of wisdom and feedback and clarity and know-how from just being able to go in which everyone can do and more so understanding how to ask good questions when you're there I love it I love it is there a thing where we can go backwards and forwards like as in we can ask something about the future or something about the past so to speak yes you can uh you can ask future related questions and the reason I say kind of like future related questions is that you know in any given moment we're making a decision and it's adjusting like time yeah. adjusting your decisions are impacting future-based realities, energies, for example. So wherever you're really putting your energy towards will be very clear. Um, so you can see pathways. Uh, a lot of the time I can tell people like, oh, okay, I see one really clear path and one path that looks a little muddier, for example. And that kind of means that they just haven't put that much energy towards it yet. So you can see future opportunities and yes. you can see future experiences. However, I tend to warn people like, don't wear your hat on that because you can make a different decision tomorrow and all of the pieces start to adjust and and to change so it, it's ever growing so it's really like the energy where you're focusing your energy most on that's where you could really pull from a future-based perspective I love it this is so interesting so today our episode is on pendulums yeah um, yes so uh, Tara what is pendulum dowsing is it dowsing did I say it correctly yeah, pendulum. So it is pendulum dowsing. So it's really funny because I use pendulums all the time and pendulum dowsing is something that I do do. I just don't really call it pendulum dowsing. Oh, <laughs> what, what, what do we call it? I just call it clearing with my pendulum. So there may be people that listen later and they're like, what? Um, but pendulum dowsing is essentially, is essentially, sorry, using your pendulum to discover, to clear energy, to discover I'm going to say in the, in the beginning, uh, dowsing was used to actually find water underground. So they would use these dowsing rods or a pendulum, for example, and it would start to move when there would be water underground. So wow. it can be used to clear things. It can be used to help you sort of fine tune an answer. So I just call it my pendulum. I don't really say I'm dowsing or whatnot. I just typically say I'm asking my pendulum or I'm clearing with my pendulum, or better yet, I'm activating, which means I'm adding in good energies. I'm adding in happiness, for example, or the energy of love or the frequency of, of harmony by activating with my pendulum. I love it. What are the benefits we could see? Like say, for example, since you've started using it in your journey, what, what have you seen in, in everything? That is a really good question. So I have been using a pendulum for, oh, I'm going to say maybe like four years now yeah. or five years. So first and foremost, I should probably just tell people a pendulum is really simple. It's just, if you don't have a pendulum, it's a simply a weighted object on a string. So it could be like a um, ring on a string. And what I tell people that the best benefit, the best use for it is to think of it as an antenna that connects your inner world to so your intuition, your higher mm -hmm. self, your outer world, because you can see it moving you can actually see it in action. And so there's this trust that starts to be built between your responses of your intuition and what's coming forward for you. So for me personally, it has really helped me build my intuition. Mm -hmm. Let me develop that trust 
because now I can feel it in my body. I can sense it in my body. I can experience it. And if I'm kind of like, oh, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. I can pick up my pendulum mm-hmm. and ask my pendulum and get a very vivid swing one way or another that tells me, it basically gives me breadcrumbs because your pendulum can tell you a yes. It can tell you a no. It can stand still, which I tell people, mean, you know, you should ask. Does that mean ask a different question? Does that mean I'm not going to tell you right now? It can start to, to really, you know, when we're in the middle of these kind of like overwhelming situations, it can help us break things down and see the next step in terms of, oh, this is something I need. And this is something I need mm-hmm. in a very visual manner that helps us release the depth. Like, was that my, my con? Like, was that me just really wanting this? Like, it helps you just release that doubt because you can actually physically see it moving. I saw, I saw your video on Instagram. It moved so perfectly. Will it always move? Say if, for example, we don't have a pendulum and we use a, like a, like a ring, would it always move so perfectly with <laughs> yeah. yours? With yours, it looks amazing. I was like, this is out of a movie because the way it was like, you know, just moving. I was like, if I, yeah, if, if I do this, I don't even think it, it was moving so nicely, so beautifully. It was like, boom. Well, so this is the thing. You have to train your pendulum, right? Um, oh. Yeah. So I teach pendulum classes. And part of what I teach is like, hey, guys, there's a couple of basics that we need to know. We need to actually get a baseline. It's kind of funny because I had this one girl message me once and she was like, I was asking my pendulum this question and I've been asking and I've been asking. And, and, and so I was like, so what, what answer did you get? And she's like, I don't know. And I was like, wait a second, was it swinging? She's like, yeah, it was swinging left to right. And I was like, but what does that mean? She goes, I don't know. And then I realized, whoa, that's a basic, right? You, you have to ask your pendulum, first of all, like, show me a yes. So you know what a yes looks like. Show me a no. Otherwise, it's just going to start swinging. You're going to be like, cool, this is working. But what answer is it actually giving yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. Um, my, my pendulum does swing very, very well. I have multiple pendulums. My pendulums do swing very, very well for me because I have practiced and trained them. So even when they don't, for example, swing that well for me, I'm, I'm in control of the pendulum. Yeah. I'm in control of the energy between it. So I will say like, Hey, I need you to show me bigger. I talk to it. Like it's a person. I talk to it. Like it's a friend. I'm like, I need you to loud and clear that message. I need it bigger. I need the swing to be bigger. I need. And so, um, now, for example, if it's clearing, like what you probably saw in the video, which is going in a circular motion yeah. and it's very big to me, that tells me there's a lot of energy to clear. If it's very small, it's kind of like, eh, we're just kind of like dusting a little bit. We're not really doing a deep clean here. So it does take some practice. And sometimes there can be some energies that influence our ability to use a pendulum. So when I teach classes, I troubleshoot with individuals and people. I do a clearing on everyone before they join so that they can have more ease in terms of connecting. And I will share this one fun tip. A lot of people can't get a no on a pendulum, which is actually quite, I find amusing. Most people, when they're trying to (laughs) use their pendulum, they don't find it amusing. But I find it fascinating because typically what it means is as a kid, you heard no a lot. And so as an adult, you don't want to hear no. And your subconscious will not give you a no through your pendulum. Oh, okay. So, so how, is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's, it's, it's actually not a bad thing. It typically doesn't, it typically goes really, really small. So I tell people, okay, so then turn around and ask, is that a no? Because the question, is that a no actually has to be a is it, if it's a no and you're confirming it will say yes so basically it will move to your predominant swing is that a no and you get a yes that means it was a no to the answer of your question it's a little bit of a like backdoor trick yeah to get. yeah yeah for some people it is frustrating but I think it's kind of funny wow wow yeah no it depends how like how open-minded you look into it right because if you can confirm the answer then it's like okay I got the no but that's absolutely amazing so um directional swings like you say we can train it is there like different multiple swings like you say bigger and smaller and clearing the energy is there like multiple different kinds of swings or can we just train it essentially there are multiple swings so you're going to 
ask for what is a yes, what is a no, right? You're going to want to, so I tell people, tell it to show you what a yes is, tell Mm -hmm. it, show you what a no is. So you'll get two different swings there. And when I say there's multiple, some people go forward and back, like from their heart space and other people will go some more, some people go on a vertical, others will go on a horizontal, typically whatever their yes is, their no is the opposite. You might get a different answer for ask a different question. Oh, you get a different swing for, I'm not going to tell you right now. Maybe you're not prepared for the answer. Most people will just get no movement when that happens. And then I'm like, okay, so now this is your like deduction here that has to go in to play. And you have to sort of ask, is that, I'm not going to tell you right now. Yes or no. Is that ask a different question? Yes or no. And then you can get a swing for clearing and a swing for activating. So a swing for adding in. So you'll have a swing for, for taking away and a swing for adding in. Swing, swing for taking away. What is that? Like clearing energy around us or just yeah yeah clearing energy around you so dowsing essentially that part is clearing out right Um, you know and and again dowsing uses like a bunch of different charts and they look kind of like fans and the the pendulum will swing on an angle to sort of tell you what that's all fine I find that a little complicated personally so I I make my charts into a b and I I use differently than a dowsing type of fan but if you basically had your pendulum in the middle and you were like show me on this chart and it started to go on to whatever angle and it said love and then and you happen to be asking about like what do I need to focus on today and it's well then there you go but taking away is normally like clearing negative energies from your field clearing trapped emotions so if you're feeling super emotional overwhelmed or you're like man, I'm just, I'm feeling a lot of fear around Mm -hmm. whatever topic. Yeah. Yeah. Hold your pendulum up and ask it to release or to clear any emotions that a are not yours that don't serve you. Wow. That kind of thing. And you'll notice that it will go into a spin to clear it. Yeah. Wow. That is absolutely amazing. Say for example, when asking questions, would we just go into it? Say if we say for, say for example, we ask a question, say we're dating someone and we really like them and you ask, are they for me? But it's like, you really like them. So you want the question to be a yes. Would that affect it? Yeah. So that's a good question. Oh no. You can't really ask about other people like that. Okay. Because everyone has free will choice. Got it. I love that. I love that. For for someone that may not understand what the hell free will choice (laughs) means, how could we explain it? Because in the world we live in, some people are just so fixated like, no, I want that. And they must receive help. But everyone has free will. Like everyone has the choice. Yeah. Free will choice. So that means that, you know, the other person in the relationship, for example, also has to make up their mind that they, A, like you, that they, B, want to be in the relationship, that they, C, think you're the one for them. You know, all of those things, they, they have their own principles and guiding, you know, beliefs and values that give them that choice. So I always tell people, do not ask about another person. It's an invasion of their energy. Exactly choice what you can ask about is things like is this relationship in my highest and best is this relationship in alignment with my or is this person in alignment with my values is this relationship you know in alignment with my values you can ask things like is there anything I'm missing Meaning like, are there any red flags that I am just so overly in love right now that I don't want to see? Yeah. You can ask things like, um, have I missed any, this is a good question, actually. Am I being true to myself? True to myself, I think is a good way to ask without asking if you're ignoring any red flags, because are you truly being true to yourself or are you just like, woo? in it hey, so how can you explain that for people because I know what that means because I was in a relationship where I ignored lots of red flags and I just I just wanted to become like um in a position where I was like no it's gonna get better or no no because we like them so much and for someone that may not know what that even means how can we explain that in the most basic way yeah that that is a a good question that kind of like so, this is just funny but this is how it, it comes to me right now is 
And it's popular right now is to watch the documentary Tinder Swindler on Netflix. Everyone's talking about it. Have you seen it? Yeah. I haven't watched it yet. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you can go watch it after this because you're kind of watching it. And you're like, oh no, oh no. And you can see all of these things. And you can also see the appreciation for romance, right? You can see that person that really wants to be loved and loves romance. And so is ignoring all of these other crazy things that are occurring. Yeah. So, you know, when we're in those situations, we are so in it. Like you said, we're so in it and we just tune out and tune off everything else. So if we were to ask our pendulum, am I tuning out anything? Am I tuning out something I should be paying attention to? And you get a yes. Oh, well, you need to open your eyes. Like there's yeah. something there that is starting to be a red flag. If you ask if this is an alignment with my values, if this is an alignment with me, um, is this relationship supportive? Is it is it reciprocated is a good question. That's and an amazing you, question. That is, oh, that's a powerful question. Right. Are you giving too much and they're not? Is it balanced? Is it reciprocated? Those are all questions that are going to help you start to, again, what I said earlier is that this is breadcrumbs, right? So you take this question, you take that question, and all of a sudden you get all these puzzle pieces and the outside of the puzzle is put together and you're like, hmm, is the picture looking good or is the picture looking bad? This is about breaking it down to ask yourself powerful questions, which normally is the hardest. That That is the hardest because sometimes we don't sometimes when we are shown something for example if it's reciprocated or if it's not and then we are shown that it's not sometimes um sometimes the truth hurts and sometimes we may have to break break out from that bubble and then go on a path of self-discovery or self-love and sometimes that in the beginning is very painful and sometimes we decide to shy away from that and carry on because we we know the path that we know instead of going through the self-discovery so yeah this is for everyone that's trying this and just just go through with it yeah you know I I went through a really massive breakup Mm, I'm gonna say well actually at the beginning of my self-discovery journey at the Mm -hmm. beginning of my journey into all of these things discovering you know myself and my intuition and my guides and my cousin actually said it to me he said it's gonna hurt if you stay and it's going to hurt if you go. So which hurt do you want to choose? Oh, how did you take that at that moment? Well, at first I was like, yeah, you're right. But I had already gone through like quite, I was already at that point of processing the relationship where I understood that. Like I knew it was coming. So, you know, if you take that phrase, for example, and you're asking your pendulum, you may want to ask things like, to gauge where you're at, right? Will it hurt more to stay right now? Yes or no. Will it hurt more to go right now? Yes or no. Because we also go through this learning process of being with that person to get to the point where all of a sudden you're like, hold on, like to the rebirth phase, to the expansion phase, to the letting phase. To So you can use your pendulum and those questions to kind of gauge like where you're at. You can also ask like, am I unnecessarily giving this person second chances am I standing in my worth yeah 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 yeah. in this relationship right like it's it's more important for us to even in the relationship use the pendulum and that connection to your intuition and to your guides as a point for self-discovery even in that moment than anything else so it's not like is he the one for me they're not going to tell you that first of all they're going to and and you're going to be biased So like you said, where you're like, I really want something to happen. You're going to be biased. You can ask your pendulum. If you're like, Ooh, that felt off. You can ask your pendulum. Am I being biased right now? Am I wanting this too much? Am I too attached to the outcome? Those will help you remove your biases so that you can get a proper, a proper answer. That is amazing. Tara, tell me about your journey. So you had the corporate job and then you, you had, what was your journey like? Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's a good question. My journey has been upside down and all around, but it's all good. It's perfect. So I had a corporate job, owned a condo, was in a relationship, thought I was going to get married. So basically did all the things society, society stated, right? Yeah. 
I had this amazing six figure job. I was in the space. That is amazing, Tara. Six figures, yeah. go you go, girl. Oh, yeah. Well, I was miserable. So don't worry about it, you know? But it's like, this is what society tells you you should have. You should have this crazy good career. I was climbing the corporate ladder. I was, you know, in this relationship that I was like, I'm going to marry this guy. I bought a property just because those are the things that society yeah, teaches yeah, yeah, yeah. you. You get a career, you buy a home, you da 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 da. And I was miserable. I was completely miserable. I was completely burnt out before the age of 35. I was like, I just, yeah, I, I was miserable. And then I had this like trifecta of whoa happened mm -hmm. that I'm going to say propelled me into, some people would describe it as dark nights of the soul. It wasn't a really dark nights of the soul. It was just knowing that things could not be the way they were. Okay. I had um, my most influential role model from when I was a kid. My, yeah. my aunt passed away and I was 33 and she was 66. So, wow. Whoa. Whoa. What's yeah. that about those, those double numbers? Those, what, wait, those what? Are, that's, yeah. that's powerful. Those are some very powerful numbers. And I remember being at her funeral and all of these people were like, your aunt is so amazing. She did this for us. She, I couldn't buy my kid a snowsuit and she bought her a snowsuit. And just like all of these things that I was sitting there and I went, whoa, if I've lived half my lifetime already, what's my legacy? Like, it was just this complete turning point of like, what's my legacy? How am I going to live my life? What's going to happen? Um, so that happened. And then I went a couple of months and I broke up with this person that I thought I was going to marry. And I was like, oh, I'm going to marry you. Was nope. you ready to break up or did you just do it? Or did you see it coming? I could sense it was coming, but I, like many of us was in that whole thing of like, I'm just going to hold on a little longer. I've already invested four years into this. It's you know. hard, right? It's hard because we always, we always crave that romance or we always crave that fairy tale. And we're just like, if we hold on a little longer, if we just try to do things right. But sometimes it's like, sometimes it, it's going to kill you because you're so knackered, you're so exhausted that it's like, I don't yeah. have any more to give. I, I didn't, you know, when we broke up, I barely cried because I had I, nothing left to give. Like I, I just, and I was so ready for it to happen. And it kind of like, I remember the day it happened as if it was yesterday. And I still look at that person and I'm just like, oh my, like, I, I'm just, I look at that person. I was like, wow. Okay. But I was so ready. Like I just was so done with trying at that point and not having anything reciprocated. Mm. So that happened. And then I sold my place. So that happened. And then I took a severance package because my job, um, you, you took a, what you took, what did you take a, a severance package? What so is it's, that? It's basically when your job, like when they pay you out of your job, cause they're going to like terminate the position. So, so like a redundancy, a redundancy uh, payout. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Oh so, yeah. I took a redundancy payout. Uh, mm -hmm. they were using the office that I was working in and they were moving it to a different place. And I was like, okay. And then I'm like, I'm, I don't know what to do with myself. And it was, I didn't know what to do with myself, but I did. I knew that I needed a break. And through all of this, I had started to lean into kind of developing my intuition. I had started to take Reiki. I had started to pull, you know, learn how to pull cards and do tarot and Oracle and kind of dabble in like, oh, this crystal's cool. And oh, like I just started dabbling in other things that were that fed your soul. That fed my soul. That yeah. were intangible that fed my soul. You know, um, like one night my aunt literally came to me at the foot of my bed and I was like, whoa, hi, what are you doing here? And she like gave me this message that the family needed to hear. And so that was incredibly awkward being like, do you still see her? Do you still see her? Does she still come to you? She doesn't come to me in the form she used to. But she comes in dreams. In dreams or just like, I know, like all of a sudden I'll just will know that her energy is near and I'll just be like, oh, hi, Janet. And I could just feel her presence. Is it you just know? you or is it other members in the family? Um, I'm sure she goes to other members of the family. They just don't maybe recognize it in the same way. Yeah. So it's a beautiful gift for you to be able to recognize it and for you to be able to see her presence. It's a beautiful it, gift. It is. It is. And that's, that's one of the things that I love teaching people about, you know, when we do intuition development type stuff is like how to connect with your guides, 
your guides can be your loved ones. They're not just, you know, angelic beings, you know, how to connect with loved ones and ask even via a pendulum. Again, most people are doubting. And I'm like, I just worked with this one girl who was like, I think my dad's a guide of mine. And I was like, okay, pick up your pendulum and ask. And she's like, oh, and she got a yes. And you know, it's such a relief to, to know that. And that someone's there, that someone's looking out for you, that someone has your back. Yeah. That it's not only you trying to find, make your way through life or finding these answers. Like you have a whole crew behind you, but it's up to us to allow that to open up it's up to us to like receive the help it's up to us to receive the messages we've uh, we are ready or we're not that's not oh wow so so what happened after that so immediately after that I just took some time I didn't realize I was that burnt out I traveled quite a bit and Where then did you go? oh I went to Costa Rica everyone's couple- going to Costa Rica is this like a thing <laughs> I went years ago. I went years ago and I had an amazing time. I went to Switzerland. Mm -hmm. I went to Barbados a couple of times. I just was like, basically if someone, oh, I went to Brazil. If someone said- Girl, Tara, this payout was good, man. This payout is good. Like, damn, Tara. I was like, I'm only living once. I'm free. I'm single. I'm on my, you know, Mm self-discovery. I need to go feed my soul. I need a beach. I need this. And I didn't worry about, I trusted, I free fell and I trusted and I went, you know, I went to retreats I, and that's the other thing I manifested like this retreat, not experience. And I just went all over the place. And then I decided to start my business, which was really this clarity coaching business. It uh-huh. was really showing people how to do this for themselves because I don't, there's no elitism in it. There's, there's just, and by that, I mean, it's not like everyone can do this. They just have to really learn how, and it's not the same for everyone. Yeah. And so I've just discovered that I have this knack for guiding people to find the way that is most beneficial for them. Pendulums happen to be part of it. So I, I started my business and I do readings and I teach about pendulums and I, then I mentor people and I guide them through really connecting in really understanding how their intuition works and ascending more or less, like going to the next level, if that makes sense. But I, I really like to do it in a way that's grounded. Mm-hmm. That isn't like, I like to take the weird out of wooey, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's very grounded and um, helpful. And I've been really fortunate to like work with all kinds of men and women of different ages, levels, mm-hmm. career wise, you know, Ever like, been. yeah, top CEOs to police officer that wants to like feel more connected to himself like all kinds of everything Tara I love it Tara I saw your post on social media your windowsill altar tell me about that we have earth air wind and water and we have citrine sage palo santo and (laughs) ruby tell me about that yes so it's funny I I have a windowsill altar because actually more so because my pendulums I stick my pendulums out on the windowsill okay every single day and night okay, okay. so the pendulum that I'm not using I now have a, a like rod of um selenite okay and I put it on there so on my windowsill altar I too try to obviously incorporate the four elements to okay. bring it all in um so whether it be palo santo or you know feathers typically for air yeah. palo santo kind of earth I now have a plant on my windowsill, a little succulent to, to represent earth, but I place my pendulums because they are crystals on my windowsill every single night on a piece of selenite and every single day, because at night they recharge under the moon and the daytime they recharge under the sun. So if I'm not using it, it's typically there. The reason I put it on selenite while it's there is because that releases, that pulls out the negative energy. So if I've been using it to clear my home or to clear my energy, yeah, I want that energy to be released out of the crystal of the pendulum. So I also do that. And then I just find they work a lot differently when they're really, charged. yeah. That's so, amazing. What's your favorite? Seeing as you said your pendulums are made out of crystals, which one is your favorite one? Or would you use it depending on how you feel or which ones you're pulled with or how does it work? Yeah, so I have a lot. Like I have a lot, a lot. And I use them based on what I'm pulled to. Okay. So the last little while I have been pulled to lapis lazuli pendulum, a pendulum that has lapis lazuli. Um, and that's a crystal for 
your throat chakra for communication, which was made a lot of sense because I've, you know, in certain instances that I'm asking questions, I feel stifled. Like I want to go and I want to say, yeah, but you did this, this, and this, and I feel like this. And then I'm kind of, I'm asking questions around that, like, Hey, yeah, let's yeah. handle this. So it would make a lot of sense. I also, I have a selenite, a pendulum made out of selenite. So if there's a really heavy energy that comes around or there's something really dark that I feel needs clearing, I typically just naturally pull that one because it already has the properties yeah, of yeah, yeah. negative energies. I know I have so many that it just and depends on. Tara, another thing I loved was, um, yeah, so I saw the selenite stick and then how you charge it under the moonlight. And then what you do is you smudge the pendulums and you clear the energy and you say, you also open the window to let the bad vibes out. Yes. So that's a really good point and really important actually. So for, for anyone that's like saging their house, for example, it's not enough just to like clear it. You have to actually let it out. So I don't, I don't even think I opened my window when I was saging this place out. I mean, okay, fine. It's not like recycling but no 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 now I know for next time girl like bad vibes you need to get out yeah it's it's more helpful to obviously let it a hundred percent a hundred percent and then you you set the intention and smooth out the vibes with palo santo I do so what intention could it be could it be like any intention like for example for a clear mind for peace for harmony or for the answers to be out of its purest, highest, like good for everyone around me. Yeah. So that's, that's a really good point. So on my website, anyone that's listening can go and download my intention. I have it in an activation guide. It's free to download, but basically that's the intention that I put. So in terms of the pendulums, I will clear the energies out of the pendulum and then use the Palo Santo to go in and activate the intention of giving answers for the highest and best, only having like the highest light being speak through it, only being able to connect to your, your intuition only. And so that just to really solidify that this is for your highest and best and the best energies coming through when, for example, you do this for yourself, cause you're clearing your room yeah, yeah. energy, go and, you know, clear. So what I typically do when I do in my room, for example, is I will walk counterclockwise so egg like it's turning back okay time yeah yeah from the center of my room and I will state what I want gone so I'm clearing negative energy I'm clearing anything that does not belong to me I'm purifying and sanctifying the energy of the room and the material objects within it whatever I want bad vibes gone I want any you know traumatic memories to be re- whatever yeah, you yeah want. yeah yeah then go the opposite direction. So now rise from the center of the room. And when you use Palo Santo, for example, you would go in and you would say what you want added into the room. I love it. So that would be your intention. I want a clear mind. I want peace. I want tranquility. I want harmony, uh, harmonious frequencies. I want whatever. And that, that's how you could do that within your own room. But yeah. That's exactly. I love it. That is powerful. Tara, what inspires you? Oh, you know what? What inspires me the most is just seeing people actually understand how much they actually know. You yeah. know, that phase of like the answers are within you is having people that light bulb go off when they're like, whoa, I actually do know this. I actually do understand this. So seeing people sovereign in their energy, sovereign in their space, sovereign in their mind, body, and soul. Yeah exercising discernment and knowing that that is true for them that inspires me like I love that, it yeah like, that, that's that's really pure what is your favorite book oh my favorite book would be the celestine prophecies is actually one of my favorite books say I would, that again the selenite prophecies Ce- Celest- celestine celestine prophecies Okay. It's basically, think of it like Da Vinci Code meets spirituality. So it's an adventure, but it's also, if you read it right now and you look at and you're reading it right now based on what's going on in the world, you will be like, whoa, it's kind of mind blown, blowing. Um, and then there's the 10th insight. So it's got a couple of books after, but it's a really amazing way to tune in and read about principles that are a big in a very fun and grounded way 
I love it. I'm going to look into it. Wow. What, what has been your favorite take on the book? So in the book, they talk about four different kind of types of people and how their energies interact. So like um, one of them, for example, is aloof. So someone, it's, they call them control dramas. So it's really interesting because the book in this parable format talks about how people try to control energy. And so when people are aloof mm -hmm. and they don't really want to answer questions, for example, or they answer with really like fluffy questions or answers, yeah, means they're actually looking for you to go in further. So they're looking to get more of your energy because they want you to ask more questions. So the book essentially goes through these four different ways to control drama, energy, and how those ways mix match each other. How wow. energy, yeah. So it's when you kind of go into those principles, you're like, oh. and it's you could see yourself in it. Like if you can't see yourself in one of those four, then you should read the chapters again because yeah, I yeah, yeah. how my energy goes, and then what it gave me is a better understanding of even in my own family dynamics or the dynamics of relationships in and around me seeing, Ooh, that person is really playing up to this control drama yeah, and yeah. Looking for me to be like, what do you mean? Yeah, yeah, you? Yeah. So that it's really helpful in sort of getting you to uh, move into more of an observer mode in your life and in your own energy than I love it. That's a, mm -hmm. that's a powerful book when you can start relating it to your own life and, and kind of see things from a different perspective. Tara, what advice, knowing where you are now, what advice would you give to your younger self? I would say all the things that I thought were weird to trust that they weren't weird. Okay. All the things that I was like, wow, that's a coincidence. That's kind of weird that they were not coincidences. They were coordinated and that I couldn't see them at that time. So certainly I would tell my, my, my younger self to just, trust those prompts I love it that's powerful because sometimes we don't realize it but it's just right in our face but it's just we see straight past it and then now looking back we would be like oh, yeah you know what it is a synchronicity like I should have paid more attention or maybe it was a sign that was guiding me but at the moment we didn't know about it um Sarah, uh, Tara tell me about you tell me about your services so we do Akashic record is it Akashic records we do human design mm -hmm. as well we mm -hmm. do, is it Tarot Oracle? It's, it's Tarot Oracle. I don't typically use those like as part of my services. They've just, it's one of the things that I give people, like everything is a stepping stone. So yeah. when I learned Reiki energy, when I learned Oracle cards, yeah, yeah. they were all stepping stones for me to understand like, how does energy work? How does it flow through you? Oracle and tarot cards and angel cards, if people pull them are fabulous ways for you to tune into your intuition and gain a lexicon, right? This is, this is learning a language of, of energy. And so when you pull angel cards or tarot cards, you're learning a language. You're saying like, oh, this image represents this, or this part of the image, this sword, for example, represents whatever. And so it's just ways of pulling more information so that you can get clarity if you're all of a sudden walking and think of an egg, well, cool, I thought of an egg. Well, I would be like, okay, an egg, fertility, ideas. Are you not actioning an idea? Do you, are you going through a rebirth phase? Like I could lead you to all of these different areas because of that kind of practice. So my services really include Akashic Records readings, which are amazing. They're really fun ways for people to sort of gain insights on their past lives, where they're going, what's happening in their lives right now. I have human design um, and I do use human design to help people really gauge how their energy is working, where they're in alignment, where they're out of alignment. Mentorship, that's typically more so for people that really want to deep dive into how their intuition works, how it's speaking to them you know, discernment. Uh, I do a lot of workshops on energetic sovereignty and pendulums, how to use them. Everything is very focused around giving back your power to you so that you're exercising your sovereignty and free will choice and being able to understand like, cool, this is a good decision for me and trusting that decision. I love it. So say, for example, what courses do we have running at the moment? I just finished intuition development. So okay. I will be running intuition development again. That is a basic course to help you tune into your intuition, get to know your guides, sort of 
understand how your energy plays into that and start building that kind of lexicon that goes on. I have courses on pendulum. So there's three courses. The first one is just the basics. We go through the swing kind of thing. The second one is learning how to clear with it, which is really beneficial. And then the last one is the power of questions because that's where most people trip up is they don't understand what questions to ask. So we deep dive into that. And then one-on-one, I do the mentorship because no two people are the same and working through what you need. Um, you know, for example, I don't have a gut feel. So if someone were to say to me, well, like listen to your gut, I'd be like, my gut doesn't say anything. So I understand that to be true for me. Um, And I help people kind of understand, like, is it your gut that's talking to you? Do we need to use a pendulum? Is it a different thing in your body? Um, so because of that, the, the mentorship and that kind of guidance is one-on-one because it's, it's unique to you. What is your gut feeling? Like, I like, for example, for me, I sometimes get a gut feeling. And also I have, if something's going to happen, I get nauseous. Like I want to throw up. Yeah. See, so that's a good one. So I don't have a gut feel, like I said, but I do have, so I have a yes, that feels like my ears are popping. Like it's this feeling through, like I'm swallowing really hard. Yeah. And so what's interesting is that even when someone else is talking, if I'm thinking something, I will feel this guess, meaning like, yes, you're supposed to say that to that person or yes, that's true. Um, a no, a no was very uncomfortable for, for a while. A no feels like someone's chopping me in the throat. It like, it's quite an evident no. It's like, don't say anything. Don't to the point now where it's, it's eased up. And then I also get um, basically a feeling like my hand has fallen asleep or that okay. feeling like your hand, like it's going to fall asleep when there is like, stay away, not good energy near you. Like someone is, something's trying to sabotage this. So a big warning, if I have not heard the other two, yes or no, my hand will just boop, go to sleep. And I'm like, oh, something's up. Hmm, okay. And I just notice sort of pull back my energy. If I'm engaged in conversation, I am just immediately like, oh, okay, great. Yeah. Thanks. Bye. And off to sort of clear myself. But those are the three. So no, I don't get a gut feel, but I definitely get a hard yes in terms of like through. Wow, that's powerful, girl. That's so, so powerful. With regards to socials, tell me about your socials. So I'm most active on Instagram. So you can find me at Tara underscore McCrory. Um, That's T-A-R-A underscore M-C-C-R-O-R-Y. Don't Uh, forget the C. Double C. Don't forget the C. Double C's. (laughs) It's okay. And um, that's where I, I am most active. I... We'll go on occasionally and just do live readings Mm -hmm. and, you know, people can ask, put up, ask me anything. Um, There's loads of tips and tricks on there. There's loads of pendulum questions. If you scroll through, I will just be like, here's three questions to ask about, because to be honest with you, you can ask your pendulum about anything. And once you've practiced enough, you don't have to ask your pendulum. If you can feel it in your gut feel, you can feel that nausea feeling you know, basically the pendulum is just giving you the trust and then eventually you'll just feel it in your body. You'll just know it to be true. So it's kind of the training wheels, I guess, between knowing it within your body and, and starting out. So I've got all kinds of questions on my socials about those things. Amazing. Tara, would you ever write a book? (laughs) Funny you say that. Yes. I've been encouraged to write a book, multiple books, but a book lately. So I would write a book. I currently, if you want to ask questions about love, money, and manifestation, have a book, an e-guide out um, that you can download for free. Powerful. But I do, I think a book is coming up. Um, I don't think. 30,000 My- 30, to 70,000 words, Tara. <laughs> I know. My, my guys were like, you don't think it's a book. It's a book. And I was like, okay, uh, there is a book on the horizon that is downloading into my psyche right now perfect i look forward to it what do you know for when or are you just vibing with it i'm just vibing with it i i thought it was going to be a kids book at first you could do a kids book too no no i know i know i i i think it's going to be I, I don't know actually i i don't know what it's going to be it's going to start off maybe as a kids book and just evolve 
something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. As, long, as long as you step on, like, you know, step in the ladder as an author, like, it's fine. Yeah, exactly. So I have finally started to write the Excellent. section. I would say that it'll be out. Hopefully, I would like it out by the end of summer. Excellent. Congratulations, girl, because it's not easy. It requires an element of consistency, discipline, perseverance as well, because th- there could be so many distractions. And if we don't make the time, then it won't get done. That's it. Tara, do you have any questions? Any last thoughts? I just want to say thank you so much for having me on your podcast. This has been such a fun experience. And, you know, I hope to continue learning more about you and listening and tuning in and just you know keep keep putting out all the good work that you're putting out I see it being you know a really big light in a very dark time for example and it's needed so hold the light and hold the line um and I'm I'm really proud of you and your guys are really proud of you so thank you thank you so much Tara Tara like you said it came the podcast started in a time of darkness. I used to cry in the park. I used to go and sit down and I was in so much darkness. So so the podcast for me has been in a way like my therapy and it has been a way for me to ask questions, to look for questions, to look for answers. And in a way I thought, you know what? If I'm looking for these answers, so are people looking for these answers. So you know what? Let's just build a connection where I may not know the answers, but I connect people to the answers and this is where I connect with people worldwide. Look at you. You're my first guest from Canada. And in the description, I'll have all your links. So I may not know, but you may know. You may be the go-to, you know? So yeah, I just think let's, let's start building a community because times like th- this are hard. And we need to like um just, just spread the light, spread the love and spread mm-hmm. the harmony because it's not easy. It is not easy. No, it's not. So congratulations for following those prompts because that's not easy either. I know. Thank you so much, Tara. Tara, thank you so much for your time and for being you and just for boldly like chasing after your dreams and just uh, being able to follow the synchronicities and just being brave enough to go for it, especially when um when we're in that position of a six year, like, you know, especially when we're making everyone around us and making society so proud. And it's true because of the burnout, because I'm 26 and I already feel burnt out. I feel exhausted. And I just feel like, you know, I need to relocate from London. And um yeah, you, you just feel it within yourself. So I just want to say mm-hmm. thank you for being so much light because people look up to you and you're an inspiration to me as well because I'm feeling that in London I'm feeling the rat race I'm feeling um you know you start to do so many things and and suddenly you're like society sees you like okay you're actually going somewhere but it's like deep down you feel more empty and more lonely and it's like we need to break away from that so Tara thank you so much for today and I can't and I can't wait for your book to come out let me know when your book comes out okay (laughs) Okay, I will. Thank you so much. Okay, Tara, have a beautiful day. Look after yourself. You Thank too. Thank you for being Bye. a part of Gentle Touch. Bye. Oh, you're welcome. Bye.